Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back, everyone, to Apollo Justice for All Ace Attorney. <laughs> oh, just Apollo Justice. Wrong <laughs> game. Anyhow, what a kind of a bombshell that got dropped on us last time. Apparently, Phoenix believes Kristoff is the guy who. Oh, yeah. Hit, 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 who he swung the bottle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the other thing <laughs> that I just was thinking about with the title Justice for All. This makes me think of. Do you remember that scene? From Hunchback of Notre Dame, where Esmeralda's, or where it's like sanctuary, and Esmeralda's like justice. <laughs> do you remember that? What does that have to do with anything? No, I was talking the title sequence. You were saying like with like a justice for all, and I was like justice sanctuary. Yeah, yeah that's the same word, but like. Okay. Anyways, we're continuing with cross-examining Phoenix Wright. He has a new testimony now. Uh -huh. Let's see what's going on here. Kristoff uh, and I had dinner. We sat at the table in the photograph. You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes, he dines with me at the Borscht Bowl Club quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot. As usual. Usual? I always eat at the table closest to the piano. So I look like I'm playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I see, where Mr. Smith was sitting. So, the plates and such on the table were from your dinner? Indeed, the remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left. After that, Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. Five minutes? So the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time? That would have been a fateful encounter, to be sure. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright, what was it you said? Kristoff Gavin and Shady Smith may have met. I believe I did say that. Here I was all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear they just passed in the hall? Hmm. That does seem a little weak as a pretense for murder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it would be, if that was all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright! What are you hiding this time? Come on, Mr. Wright. When the trap failed, Smith hit, hit the waitress. <laughs> Smith hates the waitress. Smith hit on the waitress. <laughs> About this failed trap, this is the same trap that Miss Olga Orly mentioned. The plan was simple. Elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand. Why aren't they mowing the lawn? <laughs> I mowed it yesterday! <laughs> I didn't mow the backyard because people were building the new deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, apparently that. Dad's like, no, I'm mowing the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It adds for drama. No, it doesn't. Nothing <laughs> says drama <laughs> like, in a courtroom like a lawnmower <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> And then deal five aces during one of the games. When the hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search for right. Dane, Smith looks really evil in that. <laughs> I have no eyes. You have a played a card in here. He's like, he well, looks whatever. Like, he looks like a monkey. <laughs> with a mustache. And a beard. And sideburns. Monkeys and a top have hat. sideburns. Ish. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> he would then pull out the planted card and the trap would snap shut. You swap the cards! I don't know if that's the voice I should give Smith or not. <laughs> He'll be- he's dead, so that's it doesn't true. really matter. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. There, I'm Shady Smith. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing either, so... Yes. A harmless prank, in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted! Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Hive, five of Hearts. The Hive of Hearts? The Hive of Farts. <laughs> <laughs> we probably won't do that for the whole Let's Play. <laughs> we will, though, if we really If it really up. screws up, how about? <laughs> I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? I threw it in the garbage. There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had just been drinking beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice! The murder weapon?! Here's the thing. Uh, what? I mean, this could be. 
that he just felt and found the card. But um, from personal experience, I like put on a pair of shorts the other day. And I was like, oh, there's something in my pocket. And it was a Mickey Mouse sticker from when we went <laughs> in January. For those of you who like, don't know, that was almost six months ago. That was like six months ago. I'm like, oh, guess I didn't realize that was there. I'm going to just <laughs> close the curtain. That's I not going to do anything. Now, now it just looks like a vampire's den. The curtains will muffle the sound a little bit. Oh my gosh. He drove right <laughs> he by He drove the right past. Right by the window. <laughs> I mean, this is I'm, like that scene from Monsters University. Oh, don't mind me, kids. I'm just going to be doing the laundry. And they're like basically. Doing, oh. <laughs> yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, a battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. How would you do that, though? That sounds like terrific drama. I wouldn't put the card inside a bottle. A card inside the murder weapon? That's strange. Eerie. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Please revise your testimony with this new information. Okay. I discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. He said that he found out before. He did, and disposed of it in the bottle before. Yeah, but he found out about the trap during the game. No, he found out about it while he's talking to Smith before the game. It, he just said in his testimony. No, he just said in his testimony he discovered it and disposed of it before the game. Okay. Why in the bottle? I perceived my opponent's intent immediately. I'm used to entrapment, you see. I knew what was coming. Ho ho, so you struck first. I like that. I know every trick in the book. They don't work on me. At least when you get lucky and stick your hand in your pocket, they don't. Yeah, I didn't get lucky. <laughs> the girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. He was just raging. <laughs> Punches his fist in the wall. You made a call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor at that time? Not a soul. It was the middle of the night, after all. So there, in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave the injured waitress alone. Thank you! Yeah! That, right? <laughs> that's right. good. <laughs> it's always something. Yeah, it's either me sneezing or him. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. And when you returned, the victim had uh, was already... dead, yes. I'll admit, I was a little startled when I walked in. Uh, little? He was bleeding from his forehead, after all. I guess I'd be startled, too, if I walked in on a scene like that. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Kristoff hasn't spoken in, like... Since we started the recording, yeah. it's true. Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? I'd obviously gotten involved in a rather sticky affair. And I figured Kristoff's law offices would give me a friend rate for my defense fees. Ah, glad to hear you intend to pay. Oh, I'll pay in full, Kristoff. It was I who got you involved, after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of no kidding. You may find the price of your defense quite high, my good friend. Quite high. Is this the truth that Mr. Wright was talking about? Oh man, the bills. Justice, you know what you have to do. He's lying. Expose him. Now. Y yes sir. I have to think. What's Mr. Wright trying to tell me with this testimony? The truth has to be in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Let's check, check the, the bottle. bottle. Turn it around. We actually checked it earlier already. The bottle is completely empty. Oh. So I guess that means it's lying? Yeah. Sorry, I dude. I just the card and- Oh no! Um, Mr. Wright, if I may? Yes. I've examined the bottle and, uh, I, I don't see any card in there. Hmm. No? What, Mr. Wright? Surely, ellipses aren't all you have to say for yourself. <laughs> I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. 
My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you disparaging! Disparaging? Disparaging. Oh, disparaging. I won't have you disparaging our investigation, either! We've looked inside the bottle. There was nothing! We also know that the, uh, attorneys are known for... Maybe, uh, being weird with evidence. <laughs> oh, I forgot to I feel update like... the autopsy report. No, I made sure to update the autopsy report. No, Payne, uh, say what you will about Payne. He's super incompetent, but he's at least, he doesn't really use dirty tricks. Yeah, that's because he's that bad. <laughs> he's too stupid to know to play dirty. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the card just disappear? <sighs> Into thin air. In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. Uh. It's just you and the witness in the rain. Go for the KO. Uh. Why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? We aren't. Because Phoenix Wright is like, oh yeah, my defense attorney and good friend is the oh, killer. Kristoff's <laughs> like, what the bleep, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I was giving you the senior discount. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we sat at the table in the photo. Shady Smith, Smith walked oh, in. Gosh. I discovered, discovered the trap. The trap. I disposed of it in yeah, the bottle. Yeah, see, during the game. Go back. It says, I discovered the trap during the game. Oh, that is strange. That's why that's a problem. Oh. Yeah, that is an inconsistency. Good catch. That's an inconsistency. It's before. Is mm -hmm. that, like, something we actually point out, or no? No, that's not. That's literally oh. just, like, a translation typo or something. Okay, cool. It's supposed to be before the game, not That's, like, the, the first thing I've ever seen that's been, a, like, a mistranslation. As or it's supposed to count is now in couch. session. Okay, but that's more, um, like, spelling errors. Right. That's, like, a completely wrong word. Girls knocked out cold. Smith was under control, though. I called the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. It went backwards. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, let me see the photo. So that's the second photo. He was dead. So this is... Wincing from the So paint. this is the police, basically, when they examined the body, they took this photo. He looks photo dead, but he also looks like he's wincing. Which means it almost looks like he's not dead. <clears throat> he's like, ooh, that kind of smarted. Yeah. Just a little bit. Ooh. So back. Uh. Yeah, photo forehead, hat removed during investigation. And then that's the one that they actually saw when they first got to the crime scene. So wait, that means the hat is intact? How does that work? You hit him on the head with the bottle, <laughs> his hat's there. Wouldn't the hat, like, somewhat block any sort of damage it would do? Like, he might get a concussion, or he might get knocked out, but he's Depends not gonna on... get blood gushing out of his head. He actually has a needle in his hat. <laughs> would be stupid. Yeah, it would be. That that's, does seem a bit that's strange. strange. Mr. Wright, uh, if I may. Yes. Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. Everyone's like, oh my gosh. Justice. Uh, next time you point out an inconsistency, uh, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Ah, uh, I forgot to mention something. You keep forgetting. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Eh? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it for our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. And... I picked his hat up off the floor and put it on his head. You don't mess with that! Why would you do a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Miss Orly didn't see it? It being the victim's, er, uh, his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, uh, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem, <laughs> pardon? It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm... Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. 
Actually, I believe Jesus was the only one who could from the first stone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never! Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Eh? Yeah, but you haven't told the whole truth. truth. <laughs> when I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. Uh, reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night, recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Kristoff's like, no! <laughs> Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him. Hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china pate? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please, the cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Bone china plate? A kind of porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and not plate, but... Oh, it's pate, and not pate. Pate has the uh, enunciation mark, enunciation mark above yeah. the E, I think, or the A. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. Yeah, that means that so, he knows. So, after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you... He left the Borscht Bowl Club? Most certainly. Then, then, how did he know? When did he see this bone china paint? Oh, th that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it? Phoenix, right? It's chill. Order? I will have order! Mr. Payne! Y yes Your Honor! I am still here, even though I haven't talked a whole lot! <laughs> <laughs> I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney Gavin's testimony? Uh, uh, well, as the prosecutor, I... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes while he can stammer out an answer. <laughs> After which, Christoph Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well, this will be the final recess for the day. Gavin, I have another burrito I want to eat with you in my chambers. Very well. <laughs> April 20th, 2.32 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby number 3. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber! He has free burritos now! What the heck?! <laughs> Without us? Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? Oh, this is you. May I? I don't know who this is. A magician lady. Huh? What? Who's the magician chick? Is she weird? I don't know. Is she we she looks like wait, is she wearing two earrings, but like one's there and one's there? That's the gap between her hair and the And the uh, background? And that's the background. The oh. gap between her hair strands. I d I'll I'll figure it out as I go. Hello, sir. Please pick a card. What? what's this all about? Uh is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace? With blood on it! <laughs> Where do I remember that card from? Mr. Smith's hand had three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It is five aces in all. It is true. I've seen it. The fifth ace! There was cheating, I swear to you! The missing fifth ace! Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. 
Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate's in your hands. Oh! It's her! Finally! How old is this chick? What the heck? Also, why is she a magician? Why? Why does Phoenix Wright have a daughter that's that old? And why does he have a daughter that's a magician? She may adopted Marty. That doesn't necessarily- I, I doubt it. They adopted a magician. Jim. They adopted a magician. Th that would be. That would it was be Maya's weird. idea. Maya's idea. Well, this is assuming he married Maya. He could have married Iris. She looks too much like Mia to be Iris's kid. Does that sound weird to say? I don't know. I mean, Iris and Mia are related, so. Technically. That, this is that's the problem with this. Is I'm like I don't know who this is. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem? It's the What's the problem? <laughs> um. <laughs> wow. But now this now this is makes now I don't know what voice to give her. What if she comes back? Um, my father's fate's in your hands. I know you can do it. And then she disappears. Also, she looks like Emma Sky. That's who she really looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Well, obviously not, because that this is before. No, this is not before that. This is after that. This is way, this after, is way that. after that. This is like ten years after that. <laughs> yeah. Er, she looked too, nine, nine or ten. Years she up. looked too old to have been a child born at like ten years or, or like or re more recently. Yeah, so, I agree. <laughs> what the heck? Why would you do that? <laughs> I'm so confused. Well, maybe we'll figure that out later. <laughs> bloodstained card. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding out the truth. The trump card is the best card of all the cards. His blood on it. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. I know. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? You'd seen her before? That's when I made the connection. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize she had a magician's costume. I thought she had, like... A shawl, and then she was wearing a really nice hat because they went, like, somewhere fancy. <laughs> they went to the, the British went... family's royal garden. I mean, maybe, and then, like... Jenkins, it's, show it's, the guests around. It's beautiful. So then James Roy would be like, take a picture. Bloody ace added to the court record. I mean, that makes sense. As soon as she said father, I was like, oh. Oh, wow. This is an interesting <laughs> thing. I was just like... <laughs> I'm really awkwardly sitting. <laughs> Look at that pose of pain. He's just like, Ugh. I have a card under my palm. <laughs> if it's, uh, if you guess the right suit, you win. <laughs> I don't know. Also, I only all, have a one in All the people are standing super still. I'm also, like, I never realized there was like a skylight. Yeah. Up top. April I never realized April that. April 20th, 2.45 p.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Here's the fan. Yeah. Should we end the episode here? And do another one, or should we just do a really long final episode? Let's end it here and do another one. Alrighty. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Tune in next time for the final showdown. Intro yeah. about Trump. It's the greatest showdown. Egg. Okay. I need no, to you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks again, and until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.